tired. I'm addicted to young people. I am addicted to young people. I, I don't deny it. And I tell them all the time, leave my heart alone, young people. You, you're, you're dictating. I can't do anything without thinking of it. Like we love you. I say, I love you too. But stop dictating my life. Well, I'd be just playing with them. When I came to Texas, the week of the prom, uh, I saw a little black boy out in the hallway. I said, Ricky, you ready to waltz across Texas? He said, waltz across Texas? I said, yes. Yeah. He said, Miss Mac, we don't know how to waltz. And he was whispering. We don't know. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, the white students do that. We don't, we don't know how to walk. I said, you don't know how to waltz? He said, no, no. I said, well, you just make a little box and move your feet in a box. I said, listen, you tell all the 11th and 12th grade black boys at this school to come to my house Thursday night with a pillow and a blanket because I don't have enough beds for all of you. But I have a big house and you can sleep up and down the hallway. My friend, just come to my house Thursday night. I have your food for And you know they came. And I taught those children. I cooked food in big pots like this. I borrowed some pots from the cafeteria and so forth. And I had plenty of food there for them. Taught those children how to waltz. They were sleeping all up and down my hallway. I had this big old dinky dink house, all in my family room. I had a young teenage daughter, but her bedroom was down on the other end of it. And I told me to just stay back there. I said, Don't worry about the thing. You just stay back there. Mom's all right. And that's what she did. Those young men learned how to waltz. Well, the night of the prom, they just took over. Just waltzing everywhere. <laughs> when this man and I came to the Rio Grande Valley performing, one time we had been on, on uh, been on somewhere on, on where we were on performance. Oh, Lord. Coming back through Temple. A thousand places. <laughs> somewhere, I don't remember. Anyway, we came back through Temple on Sunday morning. And Alan and I said, oh, this is a good time to go to church. So he grew up there in Temple, so we, he pulled off and we went into Temple. And I said, where are we going? He said, I don't know. I said, I don't know anything. So they had watched what happened to me, that my job had been discontinued, and they knew I was suing the school system because I wanted to know why. And the students were all in my corner because and they knew I hadn't done anything. I was their, sort of their favorite and so forth. Well, we went to this little church, and I don't know if it's the closest one to the freeway or one that you knew about. How we no, ended up in the church? That was a, uh, uh, I can't think of the other church. Well, we went to the little <laughs> church, but we slipped in the back and sat on the back pew because we didn't want to join the service. Because if those children had seen me back there, it would have disturbed the service. So we sneaked in there and sat on the back row, and when just before the minister finished the sermon in, in the doxology, we sneaked out, called ourselves going and sleeping to the car without them knowing we were there. And the minister saw us. And when, as we were getting in the vehicle, he ran around the corner of the church, Miss Mac, Miss Mac! I said, Anthony, you preached a beautiful sermon this morning. I got the message. It was one of the students that I talked to all. You know what that boy said to me? He didn't say, how are you doing? I'm glad to see you, Miss Wall. Oh, welcome. You know what that boy said? You told her, thank you for teaching us how to waltz. That's what he remembered of me. <laughs> didn't say, how do you do, Miss Mars or Miss McDaniel, welcome. Anything like that. He said, thank you for teaching us how to waltz. Anthony Bibbins, the minister. And here I am trying to congratulate him because he did deliver a nice sermon that morning.